So what does a page table entry look like? So what we're first going to do is talk about page table entry itself, each what each entry means when you translate virtual page numbers to physical page numbers. And then we will look at the page table data structure. So first we're going to look at what's each entry going to look like, and then we're going to look at the data structure itself. Okay. So fundamentally, the first thing it's got to hold is the physical page number, obviously, right? Because that's that's what the page table exists for. So it has a physical page number that is used for specifying what the translation is. Right? It also has a present or absent bit called also called a valid bit. If the bit is one, then the page is in memory and can be used. If it is zero, then the page is not currently in memory. This is how swapping is implemented. We we'll look at more details about why we need swapping, page replacement algorithms in the in a couple of segments. Um, but essentially, accessing a page table with bit zero causes a page fall, and it needs to be brought in from the disk. So zero means get it from the disk, right? So zero means disk. It's on disk. You got to go get it. Schlep and go get it from there. Uh, protection bits tell you what kind of access permission you want on the page. Um, so you have three bits, one bit for read, write, and execute, right? So you have to, um, three forms of protection in this case. You could have more. Uh, you could have more detailed information such as, you know, which process read it. Uh, it depends on different operating systems for your different capabilities. Uh, you have a modified or dirty bit which tells you whether the page was written to or not. If it was written to at the time of the replacement from memory, uh, you would have to send it back to the disk. Uh, if not, then you don't. Yeah, so you can just drop it. So it prevents you from, it saves you the cost of writing back. Finally, there's a reference bit, which is set whenever the page is referenced, either for reading or writing. This says uh, how recently was the page used, and so this is mainly used for replacement. All right, so if you want to know, so you have to have some idea which pages are more important than others, right? So what the reference bit essentially indicates is that if it was set recently, then it must be the case that it was used um, in the most recent check, and hence it should it's pretty important, right? So both modified and reference bits are useful for replacement algorithms. And finally, there's an important thing called caching. Um, essentially, if you have a virtual pages, do not not only represent physical memory, but they also represent I/O devices. Okay, so in this case, what happens is that uh, when you have I/O devices, you can't cache the data, right? For example, you have a keystroke and you cache that. What's the use of that? The I/O the next time is going to be completely different, right? You shouldn't use the cache value. In fact, it's bad. It's stale. So what the system does is essentially disable caching for such virtual pages which represent I/O. Okay, so you have caching enabled for pages that are in physical memory, but caching disabled typically for I.O. devices. So each process, in this case I've shown you three processes, a blue one, a red one, and a green one. Right? Each process has its own page table. Uh, we'll, remember this, each process has its own page table, and each entry um, is uh, possibly 64 bits or so, 8 bytes, and a lot of these entries are not necessarily valid because, for example, in this case, each of the processes, look at, look at the examples. You have blue and um, red, each has uh, three pages, and this one, which has four pages, right? So in this case, each of these is going to have three valid mappings. This one's going to have four valid mappings. So the size, the number of ent valid entries in the page table itself changes, right? They're not all the same. So you can't assume that every entry is going to be filled. Um, and so what we essentially do is each of these page tables maps it maps it to a different part of the physical memory, like you can see in this case. Uh, the continuous chunks um, of green have been mapped to different chunks in actual physical memory, and the red, green, and blue are all you know, coexist together. Right? And if a, if a green leaves, you can replace it with any of the blue pages because it's all the same size. Right? So you don't have to go hunting for uh, weird size chunks. Uh, each of the chunks are the same, which means it makes it cleanup and replacement and just space management a lot more efficient and easier. Right? The OS pages themselves decide separately as shown here, and that's how you achieve protection. Make sure that the OS pages are, on, are not read-write. Right? So these are not read-write by the user, and so that's how you achieve protection. So. In your virtual address space, um, you have a page table 
Um, I'm going to show you how protection and indirection are achieved together. So what's going to happen here is all right, so first you have your virtual uh, page set up, right? And so the for you, I'm showing you the mapping of the first application here. And then what's gonna happen is your second application is also gonna have its own mappings, its own stack, its own heap, static data, and code. And as you can see, each of these map to separate parts of the uh, address space. And hence, you achieve protection in that fashion, okay? so. If you want dynamic memory allocation, for example, you want a malloc uh, 4097, then what you would do, you would call that, and then what really happens is that um, it vends out chunk from the heap in the section which is mapped to a specific part of your virtual at, or your physical memory. Right. Um, and you will have things like recursive function calls um, working in this fashion because if you look at it, um, what happens is the same function gets mapped to a different part. So in this case, for example, you can see stack um, prime of two, in this case, being able to run, right? So you've got stack two here. Uh, let's see. Okay. So you've got stack two, which is running the first function, and then the next one comes along, and then you, you, you can allocate another stack to a different place in the system, right? And finally, you can also achieve uh, control sharing, where, for example, you have the same uh, process running. You have two copies of the same application running. Right? In this case, all the code and all the instructions are the same because they're exactly the same program. Right? So why do we need to maintain two copies of the program? You can maintain only one copy. In this case, the code page is completely shared between the second application and the first application. Obviously, the, now the code is marked as um, with an X, which means no, uh, only read, no writes, right? And you can run instructions from this case. So why do we don't want to write? Because you have two applications mapping into it, and if it starts changing, then the other application is going to change as well, which is a violation of protection. So whenever you have sharing, unless and otherwise the, both the applications desire that they explicitly want to, Probably each other, you essentially mark them as read only. Right. 